Hello again, in this series we're making a low poly game ready Spartan warrior. In this episode we'll be baking out the textures from our high poly to our low poly. As always I've made a couple of mistakes but I've kept those in so you can see the problems you might come up against. And I actually made a mistake in the last episode where my islands are actually overlapping on my UV map. So you'll see the problems that can cause and watch out for that before you start baking. So I have my high poly and I have my low poly, they're right on top of each other and they've had their scale, location and rotation all applied for both models and I'm ready to bake the information from the high poly onto the low poly. That will make it easier for painting and it will give me a normal map for all my high poly detail here. Your low poly must be unwrapped in order to do this and I prefer to do it in Blender Render. So first of all, let's just delete that material and make sure nothing's going to interfere. And I'll just clear this material down here so we're starting afresh. Hopefully this will be just a reminder for you if you looked at my previous tutorials on the wood and the stone. But I select my high poly and then my low poly, so that's selected to active, which is the last that's selected. And we can go down to the baking panel. But before we do that, we need to set a texture to bake on. So let's press new. This is going to be the normal map. So warrior norms. And I'm going to do 2048 by 2048. That way, if I want to reduce it for a game engine, I can just reduce it in something like Photoshop or similar. Always best to start with high resolution first and lower it though. It will give me more pixels to paint on as well. I don't need the alpha and I can press OK. Now to make sure this is the active texture, I have the retopo or the low poly selected and I go into edit mode and that's where a lot of problems can be caused. People don't realize that their texture isn't actually active even though they've just made it. So let's just reselect that, warrior norms and I'm just gonna turn off the stretch so we can't see anything. That's with the end panel there. So you always go into edit mode just to check what you're baking to. Let's change this to normals selected to active and then bake. It is sometimes a good idea to reduce the polys of your high poly if you're having baking problems. It may be that your computer can't quite handle it. Now the other issue I've got if I go into edit mode, can you see it's all uh, jaggedy? That's because I forgot to turn my low poly onto smooth shading. So in object mode, click on smooth and do the same thing again, bake. And this time it's come up great. So I can save that image and then create a new image. This one's going to be ambient occlusion. So Warrior AO, 2048 by 2048 and no alpha. Now let's check that this is the active image. See, I didn't do that in edit mode, so I need to check that that's the active image, Warrior ambient occlusion by going into edit mode and then making sure that the Warrior ambient occlusion is on. Right, before doing the ambient occlusion, I need to set the world tab to have higher samples, so 10 it will give a less grainy image and then go back to my baking and turn to ambient occlusion. I turn normalized on as well because that's for black and white images, which it is in this case, and press bake. And that's done a good job. I can come out of edit mode to see that and that's brilliant. Image, save as image, warrior ambient occlusion and let's create a new one for the cavities. So warrior cav. Same as last one. This time I need to get my high poly Spartan Warrior. I'm gonna just unsee my low poly, change it to vertex paint and press paint, dirty vertex colors. And that makes the crevices dark and the highlights light. That's really useful for painting. Now I don't feel like it's done an amazing job there. It's not too bad. If you have any problems, you can delete the old one by going up to the data tab here and going down to the vertex colors and deleting it. And then let's try that again. Vertex paint, paint, dirty vertex colors. It did do something, but it didn't seem to do what I wanted it to do. And this does glitch occasionally. If you do get any issues, you just delete it and do it again. And if it's still not working, then you can do it within cycles, which I'll show you in a second. But yes, that seems to be working a bit better now. You can see in the crevices there, we've got some darkness and light bits on the edges. It's a bit jaggedy in places though. That's because my model's not that smooth. But when you see it from this distance, it's fine. So we've got our vertex details now. So let's select the high poly, then low poly last, and make sure we can see it. Back to the bake panel down here. And this time we're going for vertex colors. Make sure, of course, that we've got the cavity active. So let's go into edit mode, and then check the cavity is active. 
and not the ambient occlusion and then press bake and there we have it you can see the effects it's very subtle in this case and I'll show you how you can do that in cycles in a second so image save image as warrior cavity save okay let's go across the cycles and I'll quickly show you how you can do the cavity within cycles so I'll just unsee my low poly I'm going to create a new texture called warrior cav C for cycles just so I've got both and I can test which one's better and then I'm going to bring out the node editor like this and get rid of this menu with N a new material for the high poly I'll call this Spartan high poly for the moment so I know it's attached to the high poly and move these across slightly and in order to get that cavity information in cycles we go to shift A to add input geometry and I want to leave a bit of a space there for a ramp and it is the pointiness that we bring in I'll go to rendered mode now you can see the cavities aren't showing up at the moment so I need to increase the value of this pointiness by bringing in a color ramp so we go to shift A add converter color ramp and bring that in the middle there and generally as a rule it's about 0.4 and 0.6 and then you can play with it around there and I was a bit confused there because I didn't know what was going on but I had my retopo selected all the time instead of the Spartan high poly so I'll just do that go to the Spartan high poly material and hook that in and now we can see the cavity starting to happen I'll just bring these back to about 0.4 and 0.6 and that should be a similar result to the cavity mask that we baked out and that's how you can do it in cycles and then we can bake this information to our image here so now I want to bake this information of the color from the high poly to the low poly so I'll just view my low poly and I'm going to give this a new texture so it doesn't get confused and this will be warrior texture I'm not going to do anything to it at the moment it just needs something to bake to and I'm going to add texture image texture and I need to put this texture in here so it knows what to bake to so this is the low poly texture and we're coming from the high poly color to the low poly so if I select this first that'll be selected to active and then I select my warrior cav cycles which is this image here that's what it's going to be baking to so from the high poly the color here to the low poly here I'll just do those select those again selected to active come down here to color or diffuse in this case and we need to turn direct and indirect lighting off it's just the color information we want and we want selected to active and press bake some people prefer to use the cycles one because you've got more control because you've got the color ramp whereas paint dirty vertex colors is just a one button click the only problem is baking in cycles can be glitchy so there's our bake I'll just save that and now we've got two cavity images that we can use this is what I mean by cycles being a bit glitchy you can see there there's some slight anomalies you can get rid of those you can see around here there's a few as well often it's the case that your ray distance isn't up high enough I'm just going to put that up a bit that's the distance between the two meshes so this big blob here is the high poly against the low poly so if there's a distance between them that is the ray distance so just turn that up a bit and we'll bake again and see if that helps and that does seem to be helping but you can see there's some places where the eyes are still coming through you're probably thinking well why don't you just chuck it all the way up to one but actually occasionally it sort of overlaps itself if the ray distance is too far that's why a lot of people use a cage but that's quite complicated stuff and maybe I'll leave that for another tutorial I'm going to turn the ray distance up a bit higher and you can see there are still a few issues I'm going to turn it all the way to one then and that's close but you can see a tiny few glitches around the place and that's why blender renders just that little bit easier than cycles in order to fix this I would actually need to duplicate the low poly mesh and build a cage which is making sure that all my vertices are above the high poly and using that cage to bake the information onto my low poly and that's what cages are for but in this case it's too much outside the scope of this tutorial but I thought you might be interested in that sort of details I'll save that anyway and I'll quickly set up my texture so let's hide the high poly and make it non-selectable and non-renderable and let's put this information onto my low poly I'll just maximize this screen for the moment 
with shift spacebar, shift S over this to change the shader to the principal shader, move these over to one side, and I'm going to change this one to the warrior cavities. It's non-color data because it's black and white. I'll duplicate that and change it to the ambient occlusion, and I'll duplicate that and change it to the normals. Then I'll shift A, vector normal map, and bring the normals in. And I'll put a few mixed color nodes in. This one will be the ambient occlusion, so that will be multiply. I'll duplicate that. This one will be the overlay. This will be the base color, so for now I'll just make it slightly brown, skin tone sort of thing. We'll paint that in the next episode, and I'll bring these into the color. So this is coming in as a multiply, this is coming in as an overlay, so that will give me the light bits and dark bits, and let's see what that looks like. There we go, not too bad. This is the low poly, and you can see what I mean by the silhouettes. You see he's got slightly pointy knees there, and the only point where it's really a problem is where the light in cycles hits it, and it's hitting a sharp edge. So slightly sharp edges here. It's probably going to be seen from about this distance, so let's see how that's working around the place. Also, I'm going to put a color ramp in here. Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp, just so I can increase the highlights and shadows as I see fit. Remember, with Node Wrangler installed, so File, User Preferences and Add-ons, and type in Node, or wrangle or whatever, and tick that. You can then press Control Shift click, and you can see what the effect your nodes are having. So with the overlay node, anything that's gray won't make any difference. The white will come out lighter, or it will lighten that base color, which is that, and the blacks will darken. Also, I need to put the factors up, so that's fully influencing the textures. Let's have another look what that looks like. So I can just press Control Shift on the principal shader, and there we go, now we're seeing the real crevices in here now. Now there's a few minor glitches, there's one just here, and there's quite a major one just here, and it looks like that's actually quite a big problem. This is a problem, I would say, because it's quite a major area. This, however, I think is a problem with my UV map. So what I'll do is I'll check that, I'll go across to my normal map, and I'll come out of rendered mode, and I'll just select that area. So it's over here, and yes, there is definitely a problem there. So let's select all and see what's going on. I've accidentally overlapped two of my textures. Now if you do that, it's actually quite a pain, I'm afraid, because you have to go back and pull these two out. It does mean you have to rebake all your textures, because all your textures are baked in accordance to this UV map. So there's one problem there, which is a bit stupid of me, and I think there's one here as well. Let's just quickly have a look. I'll press link selection in and find out where that is. Oh, it's right at the end there, so it's probably not noticeable, but I'm going to move it anyway. So back to the islands, move that into place. And in order to make space for this, I'm going to have to move them around a lot. So in the next episode, I will have tidied up the mesh and the normal maps and everything, and we'll be painting our textures.